Trump who was speaking, wasn't he? And uh, he, he made this statement. Let's listen to what he said about the fact that, you know, because of the attempted assassination, that uh, he, he wasn't supposed to be there tonight, that it was a miracle that he was. <coughs> so many people have asked me what happened. Tell us what happened, please. And therefore, I will tell you exactly what happened. And you'll never hear it from me a second time because it's actually too painful to tell. The amazing thing is that prior to the shot, if I had not moved my head at that very last instant, the assassin's bullet would have perfectly hit its mark. I'm not supposed to be here tonight. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. So that was the scenes overnight. Ian, I know that you were watching on it, hanging on his every word. I mean, this seems to have boosted his popularity, doesn't it? I stayed up to watch it so you didn't have to. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Well, thanks. We all have uh, <laughs> Other things I do for We've got the programme. edited highlights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this was a very un-Trump-like speech. Mm. It was a very unconvention-like speech because normally the candidate will go into a convention and be very rah, 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 and that's na Trump's natural speaking style. But certainly the first half of it was not like that. It was very sober, reflective. Um, the kind of speech you would hope Donald Trump would make in these circumstances, actually. Now, he did get a bit more boisterous towards the end, uh, called Nancy Pelosi, Crazy Nancy, but he only mentioned Joe Biden right. once mm. in the whole speech. And you, we can come up with all sorts of reasons for that. Um, he delivered a speech that, obviously, I mean, the crowd in the hall absolutely loved. Um, and I think... Independent voters will have watched that yeah. and thought, well, OK, I've seen a different side to Donald Trump today. It's almost like, you know, in terms of what's happened to him, this, obviously, this assassination... Near-death experience. But also what's also happening with Biden in the background. Right. It's almost, you know, the polls have all been indicating for a while now that Trump is going to win. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of maybe he's thinking, I might be president, and therefore I've got to maybe talk about bringing people together and have that more presidential sort of tone rather than, you know, just going for the jugular as often possible. And there he is, do. Uh, I mean, kissing. Well, first of all, the speech went on for an hour. Uh, hour and kissing, a half. Hour and a half, right, kissing the uh, uniform of the man who yeah, that was, was a bit cringy, murdered. Thought. Well, it might be, but um, ultimately it's the big question whether or not he's going to be facing Biden or perhaps yeah. Kamala Harris and overnight uh, a lot of talk about... Uh, the late, excuse me, the last president, uh, Barack Obama, saying it's time to go, yeah. and perhaps a Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg uh, ticket. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is uh, President Biden going to be uh, running? Yes well, the, or no? The yeah. reason that Donald Trump only mentioned him once is because he didn't need to do no, anything else exactly. because the Democrats are attacking him, and understandably so. I mean, it's it's an awful thing to watch. It's a slow motion car crash. Mm. I think Joe Biden is starting to realise that this is not tenable. Um, I think what would push him over the edge now is if Barack Obama actually came out publicly and said, Joe, you've got to go, or if Bill Clinton did. Now, Clinton and Obama don't... Know, I mean, the strange relationship between Obama and Biden. Right. If you read Obama's memoirs, he's not a, not a huge fan of Biden, it has to be said, and Clinton and, uh, and Biden have never got on. But I think we're reaching the, the the point where Biden will probably... He could be gone by the end of the weekend. That's what a lot of people okay. in America well, are yeah. speculating Listen, we've on. got Bob Mulholland here with us as well, Democratic political operative and also a friend of Biden. So let's speak to him now. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, uh, we're speculating now about uh, what is going to happen with President Biden. Uh, Ian said just referred to it as a slow-motion car crash. In, in your mind, then, is this decision imminent that he is going to step down? Um, to the, I'm a Biden delegate. I'll be in Chicago a month from now, and all indications will be a Biden-Harris ticket. I know the press is speculating a lot, uh, but that's all hearsay, and they say, oh, so-and-so said this, but so-and-so is not uh, quoted in the paper. And as far as the uh, speech, I think uh, Trump almost fell asleep a couple of times, and as far as independence, I think they probably clicked on a rerun of I Love Lucy. It was a rambling speech. I didn't under, quite understand what Trump was doing, and I, I've seen a lot of press reporters afterwards talk that the teleprompter guy was, like, getting lost because Trump was all over the map. Uh, we have 16 weeks to go. That's almost three times the length of UK elections, and I know the UK election, people said, oh, way too long, way too long. 
We have 16 weeks. The, as long as the economy does well, the Democrats will win on November 5th. Um, Bob Mulholland, um, you've watched uh, President Biden, you've watched the debate, you've uh, seen his various interviews since then. Uh, you're a Biden delegate. Do you honestly uh, and sincerely and truly believe that he has the mental capacity to go on to, for another four years to be the American president? Yes or no? Yes. Trump is the one that a few months ago forgot the name of his wife. You know, people... Uh, jump over uh, Trump's problems, but Trump has had a lot of mental problems. Uh, and um, uh, tonight he had a teleprompter, so he got through most of it, but um, not very uh, effective, in my opinion. I, and I think the presidential historians will rate it as one of the worst convention speeches, maybe since Herbert Hoover, the Depression president. But if we're focusing on President Biden and we, and we think about, you know, some of the some of the scenes that we've seen recently, there was the confusion, wasn't there, when he was introducing President Zelensky, for example, and referred to him as President Putin, which was excruciating. And there are more voices joining forces, aren't there, to put pressure on him, calling for him to go. It has become a difficult situation. And doesn't that detract from what this should be about? Only this week, remember, in America, every day is a new event. So, for instance, last Saturday, the discussion was all on Biden. And then Saturday night, I mean, a shot was fired. And then for days, it's all on Trump. And tomorrow could be a whole different story. We as Americans, uh, and I've been involved in politics for over 50 years, we have short memories. Uh, most voters don't even pay attention to this kind of stuff until the last few weeks. And uh, when the press hyperventilates, oh, my God, this happened, that happened, and they start to believe in their own reporting. But that's not how the American people are. Remember, two-thirds of the American people don't even have a passport. They couldn't find any of these countries that anybody's talking about on the map. And when it comes to... Bob, yeah, Holland, Bob Holland, the people who do vote, so the... Uh, opinion polls are uh, quite clear and across the board from across the political spectrum that um, it's looking like a, a disaster for President Biden. You know, you might be a delegate, but let me ask you this. Let's assume that uh, President Obama makes that telephone call and says, look, Joe, it's time to go and uh, uh, give room to perhaps uh, Kamala Harris and uh, run alongside maybe the transport, uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Would you be in favour of that? Can you see that happening? Uh, I'll wait until Biden makes any change of decision. Hey, just remind your viewers, in June of 92, there was a national poll, President Bush at 32, Ross Perot at 30, and guess who? And Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton was at 24. And I remember the press. Oh, this guy's finished. He, Clinton ain't going anywhere. But and, of course, he's eight years in the White House. So when somebody which of those says... Candidates, which of those candidates were uh, clearly uh, showing visible signs of, uh, well, mental deterioration? You're missing the point. You were referring I to polls. Oh, the polls show that it's basically a dead even in America. Trump's usually ahead by a few points, but we're 16 weeks out. And let's not jump ahead of the voters in America. The American people will decide. Now, I haven't listened to what President Biden said. He said he would uh, stand down if he had a medical condition or an act of God. Just uh, have a quick listen to this. Is there anything that you would look to to say, if I see that, I will reevaluate? If there had some medical condition that emerged, if somebody, if the doctors came to me and said, you got this problem, that problem. He is pointing to the fact that there are circumstances in which he would step down. I understand your advice is for the moment for him to hang on in there. But if he did, who would you want to see as the candidate? Well, obviously, the President Biden, if he made such a decision, would be Kamala. Yeah, just remind your viewers that at least our guy's religious. He goes to church every weekend. The only time Trump's an atheist, the only time he's gone to church is for one of his wife's funerals and for a big donor. So we have a kind of a, a strange election where the Republican Party acts like their God, uh, their guy, Trump, is some holier than now. You know, he's had multiple kids with multiple women. He's had multiple marriages and he's an atheist. But yet that's the Republican running and he's the next president of the United States. No, he's not. Well, listen, Bob Holland, Mom, Mom Holland, we appreciate you joining Thank us you. this morning. Uh, thank Absolute you for your thoughts. And we will wait to see what happens next with the race. Thank you.
but a, a very loyal friend to Biden. <laughs> um, I'm not yes. sure how much he was helping the Democrat cause there. I mean, look, the thing about Trump is people in America know him. And, uh, and it is something we might find difficult to comprehend that, you know, he has all these things going on in his past and the way he behaves, but the fact is they voted for him. And actually, Biden isn't like Clinton back then. He's not the insurgent here. Right. But also, the debate has moved along. It's not about could Joe Biden survive another four years in the presidency, is it? Is he fit yeah. to be president mm. between now and January? And I think a lot of people are coming to the conclusion that no, he's not. And if he does... If he does step out now, I think it's entirely possible that he could also resign the presidency so yeah. Kamala Harris could then fight the campaign as the incumbent president. And she's got a lot to do if she, that does happen because it's 16 weeks yeah. and, you know, how is she going to get her presence out there to but, beat Trump? But your point about Pete Buttigieg, who he ran for the presidency in... Well, I can't remember now, was it Last 2020? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, I mean, that would be, as Sir Humphrey might say, a courageous move for the Democrats to have a black female presidential candidate and a gay vice presidential mm -hmm. candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, there will be people who say, oh, I don't know whether America's ready for that. Well, you only, you only know... I mean, it depends on the personalities. And, I mean, he's... At, Pete Buttigieg is very well respected in, in the States, yeah. I think, across the political divide. The problem is time, though, isn't it? Yeah. Is that Democrats have got to make a decision and probably around Joe Biden sooner rather than later. Because they need to build up that support. Of course support, they have. They, of course the they have. And when we talk about support, uh, one thing that I think stood out are those pictures yeah. of the Trump supporters wearing ear bandages in yeah. solidarity mm. with Trump. There we go. I think we can see... Yeah. I mean, that's quite a look, isn't it? It is. It is. I and think you'd look really good with one of those. <laughs> Are we all going to be wearing them? Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> it's the summer. <laughs> I mean, this seems, you know, obviously that's uh, funny to look at. But, you know, this is the leader of the free world. Uh, the implications of what happens affect us all. And 